Intimate scenes on stage and in films can be vulnerable and scary for actors to perform. But now there is an emerging profession that ensures safety, efficiency, and effectiveness when it comes to those intimate moments. Intimacy directors and choreographers are on the rise, in part due to movements such as Me Too and Time's Up, in addition to the downfall of former Hollywood heavyweights Bill Cosby, Harvey Weinstein, and others. Joining me to share more about the world of intimacy choreography and its relevance in our society is Jace Meyer Crosby, theater director, actor, and intimacy director. Jace is joined by Ralph Moranto, artistic director of JCC Center Stage, and Lindsay Warren Baker, a playwright, composer, and teaching artist. Welcome to all of you. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us. You. So just to begin, Jace, I'm telling you right now, people are like, what is this intimacy choreography thing? So break it down. What exactly do intimacy professionals do? Yes, yeah, so um, intimacy direction is sort of what we call it uh, uh, for the stage. Uh, the film and TV counterpart would be uh, intimacy coordination. And uh, the premise is basically that similar to the way um, violence and stunts get uh, choreographed and coordinated on a film set or in a theatrical production, um, that the same attention should be given to, to intimate scenes, scenes involving very close proximity, emotional intensity, very often um, sexuality on stage, um, that these things need to be handled with um, consent at the forefront and with a lot of pre-planning so that um, sexual harassment doesn't actually occur, um, accidentally occur, and um, so that the story comes through as effectively as, as possible. So as theater artists at this table, have, have you, and producers and directors, have you ever been in a situation where you would say, wow, we need an intimacy professional, but it didn't exist at the time, this profession wasn't around, and you had to forge ahead uh, with something, and it might have been uncomfortable or a challenging thing. I think for me, the um, most challenging moment was actually when I was in school and you know oftentimes as uh, theater students were left to our own devices saying here give this scene direct this scene act in the scene and you get together with your um, friends and classmates to do that and uh, in you're given challenging material as well you should be mm -hmm. but um, particularly back uh, at the time over 10 years ago when I was going through some of this stuff I was given a challenging scene that was dealing with you know very serious sexual content uh, and um, touch and so we had to navigate that on our own because it was left up to us to figure that out. And so now that I know more, now that I know that this even exists, there's training for it, there are people out there to collaborate with, I think back like, oh, that needs to be a part of the education, that needs to be a yeah. part of the training. Um, and Jace and I are talking about how I can incorporate some of that into my own classroom now, in addition to the work that we've done together, you know, as a director, intimacy director collaboration on shows. And for me, directing and being a performer in Rochester for many years now, <laughs> uh, I never even thought that this was a profession that could be out there. I figured as a director that was my job to make that happen. But I didn't have official training or formal training in that, so I was just using my instincts as I do as a director. Um, and once I learned that this was something that I could take advantage of, it was just like, like fight choreography, something mm -hmm. that just opened my eyes to say, we can do it in a safe way, we can do it in a way that's going to be even more effective than if we just try to figure it out ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it's just been a, an eye-opening experience for us at the JCC Theater. Well, I want our audience to be able to see exactly what we're talking about. So we do have some scenes. Jace, you choreographed these scenes, and this is for uh, the latest production at the JCC Center Stage in Decent. You directed this. Yep. Uh, you produced this. So let's take a look at this. And while we're watching, I would, if you would, comment a bit and explain kind of what you choreographed and what the thinking that went into what you created that we're seeing. Great. So the, the process tends to differ depending on the, uh, the director that you're working with. And Lindsay and I had a really great collaborative relationship in which she would start with the text. She would say, uh, this is where a kiss takes place. She would say, this is where um, you know she touches her breasts because they talk about that later. And then I would come in and I would give a a sort of, we'd have a boundaries conversation, we'd have a comfort level conversation, and then we would go through very mechanically 
a, a choreographic process so that the actors are never surprised on stage, so that you can see the level of emotion they're bringing to this. The reason they're able to sink into it like that is because they know exactly what's gonna happen to their body in the next moment. They can just completely yeah, like their reactions are, are, are everything. They, they right. sell that story because they feel safe and because they know that nothing's gonna happen that's gonna, that's gonna take them off guard in the moment because it's, it's choreographed. Mm -hmm. And the argument is always, well, if we choreograph it, it won't look real, it won't look <laughs> authentic. Huh. Um, and which, which is a, a, a sort of an argument that, that I understand. It sounds logical. Um, choreography, we think, of, we think of fake, we think of pre-planned, mm -hmm. we think of inauthentic. Um, but the reality is, Creativity and art comes from freedom within boundaries. If you have unlimited freedom, you're paralyzed. You, you don't know where to begin. Um, I heard someone say an artist in front of a, a blank canva canvas is paralyzed. It's not until you constrain yourself to say, I'm gonna paint a landscape yeah. or I'm gonna paint a tree that you can really make, make beautiful things happen. And so when we constrain it and say, we're gonna have your hand placed at exactly this point, and then we're gonna have it travel from here to here, then once we have that framework in place, they can really let themselves go and get really emotional scenes like Sarah Michelle Penner and, uh, and Maya Dwyer brought, brought to that scene in Indecent. So Lindsay and Ralph, talk to me. When Jace comes in and does his work, what type of reaction are you getting from your performers? What type of feedback are you getting in terms of the impact? So I've worked on two shows with um, Jay so far, and for everyone, it's not just for us as directors that this is a new field. For the actors, it's a new field. And so to a certain extent, um, whoever you're working with as a director is responsible for setting up the environment in which you're collaborating and cr you know creating that safety and that, that um, uh, I don't know, collaborative environment. Um, but, it's also contingent upon the actors to figure out how to relate to each other and how to be okay in that kind of physical contact. Yeah. So by working with Jace, it becomes very clear about what the boundaries are, how we interact with each other, what is an acceptable progression from point A to point B to point C in terms of, you know, we. You, you start creating a shape and then you add the next detail and then you add the next detail. So kisses, actual mouth to mouth kissing isn't happening until well into the process, right? Um, and for them, what was interesting, this latest project for both I think Sarah and Maya was saying this is so different and so new, like they're not used to waiting. Wow to go to that step. Um, or some people do the opposite, where they'll right. save it until like dress rehearsal right. because they're uncomfortable and don't know how to handle right. it. Okay. Yeah, so it, it depends on the actor and what has been quote unquote expected of them or yeah. how they think they're supposed to behave or what they're supposed to do or how they can show that they are totally comfortable yeah. or not. So this was wonderful because it just provided an understanding and a vocabulary and a way in which to communicate to ultimately create a really beautiful, multiple beautiful right. scenes, not only between the two of them, um, but between the whole company. You know, there was a moment where we were going along and it was working and everyone was doing pretty well. And then it was also, we were just getting stuck, yeah. you know, as a group. And Maya's like, I think we need Jace. I, said, I think you're right. <laughs> and I hate we've got about 30 seconds left, but this was so effective that you're continuing to work with Jace in the next production. Yeah, I mean, I'm planning my seasons going, okay, where do I need Jace? Yeah. Um, we're right now working on Oklahoma, which has a surprising amount of intimate moments between yeah. the characters, and I said, I definitely need Jace, and it's really been elevating the production to a whole new level. All right, well, we are out of time, but a huge thank you to Jace Meyer Crosby, Ralph Moranto, and Lindsay Warren Baker for joining me today, and for explaining really in greater depth why the performing arts world and our community, all the way to Hollywood, needs intimacy professionals. To learn more about Jace's work, go to jcmeyercrosby.com, and you can also get more info through Intimacy Directors International at teamidi.org.